In this video, I'm going to be showing you Magic Patterns, which is a platform that lets you build prototypes entirely using natural language. What sets Magic Patterns apart is its ability to turn words into fully designed front-end concepts and work on an infinite canvas, all the while quickly iterating on your ideas. This isn't a full-stack app builder. This isn't something like Lovable or Bolt or any of those types of tools, this is not trying to be that. Instead, Magic Patterns focuses helping multiple stakeholders bring their vision to life fast without getting bogged down in the code or complexity. Let's dive in. Once you log in, you'll have an interface where you will, with just natural language, be able to describe exactly what you wanna create. So let's just say I want to create a clone of the New York Times website. What we're gonna be able to do within this is we can iterate with natural language what we want the initial design to be. Once we send in our prompt, what's gonna happen is it's going to take what we asked for and it's going to begin to create all of those different relevant UI components directly within Magic Patterns here. Within here, we see that it's creating the app.tsx. It's scaffolding out all of the relevant components. So the header, the article card, so on and so forth. And ultimately it will render directly within the application. And then as soon as it's ready, here is the generation of the application. Now, the first thing that I wanna show you is I'm gonna add this to a brand new canvas. Once we have the canvas loaded, we're gonna have our component that we can move around within this infinite canvas. You can imagine you can have this completely full with different content. Where this is really powerful is one, you're gonna be able to invite different colleagues or different people that you wanna work on the project with, or even different stakeholders. Say for instance, if you work at an agency and you wanna quickly prototype a vision that a client might have, instead of sending it off to a designer, waiting potentially days or weeks to schedule another call, you could potentially leverage this to get a sense on what they have in mind directly within Magic Patterns. Okay, just to demonstrate this. So say for instance, if I have this selected, we have a couple different options within here. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say for the header where it reads the New York Times, I wanna invert the colors for that as well as the navigation. Now we have the black header right behind the title as well as the navigation on the page. And what you can do within this is you can begin to move around different structures elements, make things bigger, smaller. You can change the overall design or look and feel, and it will just give you the ability to quickly see what different people have in mind, depending on the stakeholders that you have. So instead of wasting time within design and development before it ultimately gets to someone and they say, I don't actually like this at all. We have to go through all of the different phases again. You can save an absolute ton of time by leveraging a tool like this. Now I'm gonna send in one more quick edit. I'm gonna say, I want some placeholder images for the image attributes. I do see that there are some images here. So I just wanted to have some placeholders within that for our subsequent generations. Now we have some placeholder images for our initial generation. Next, one of the neat things with the platform is what you're going to be able to do directly on the canvas is also create brand new components. Say for instance, I want to create a dashboard that have a number of different charts like pie charts, line charts, so on and so forth to visualize financials. And here is the dashboard that it generated for us. Within here, what I can do is I can edit it similar to before. I can say, I wanna add in a header and a footer that have a black background that reads developers digest with some placeholder links. Next, another really powerful feature of the platform is the ability to reference pre-existing pieces of context. Say if you wanna reference something like the New York Times redesign that we have here. What we can do is we can leverage the reference feature. And what we can do with this is we can specify for something like, I wanna reimagine what the books page looks like or the politics page or whatever it is. And what we can do with this is it's going to pass in the context of what we already have into the generation. So it keeps that continuity of some aspects that we already have. Say if we want to keep the header as well as the footer. So we have what all of the pages look like all side by side, you can absolutely leverage something like the reference feature for that. Next, what you can do at any point, you can go ahead and open up any of the tiles within your editor. And then as soon as we click the edit button, we're within that original panel that we were in and you can iterate on natural language, send in subsequent prompts. Additionally, within here, we can reference the codes. If I want to say, pull out the footer, I can pull that into our application directly. I can also export this. I have the option to sync it with GitHub, Figma, download the zip file, or I can copy the code as a prompt. A number of different options. And the great thing with the export functionality is it really is cross-discipline. We're gonna be able to send it to a designer with Figma, or we can send it to something like a front-end developer by syncing with GitHub or downloading the code directly. Additionally, within here, there's a number of quality of life features. You can see 
what your website or product looks like across a number of different popular devices. You can make sure everything is responsive and that everything does look how you intend across all of the different sites. Now, additionally, what we can do within here is we can deploy this directly. Say if you have a static landing page and you want to just go straight to production, you can go ahead and do that. Additionally, within here, it does track all of our different changes. For instance, if I wanted to roll back and forth at any point of all of the different generations that I have, it has all of that history of everything that I've done. So you don't need to worry about potentially breaking something. You can always roll back to what you had previously generated. If you do want to do targeted edits, they do have that functionality. Say for instance, if I want to pass in this section of the component and make an edit here, for instance, change the background to black and I go ahead and I send that in, what it will do is instead of actually having the entire context and hoping that it does map to what we're asking for with natural language, this will just give the large language model under the hood the exact targeted edit for what we're asking for. Now, additionally within here, there are a number of different slash commands. You can discuss different changes. You can have inspiration or debug issues if they were to come up. You can also polish or delete any unused files as well. Next, I wanna show you the component feature. And what's great with this is you're gonna be able to create reusable components that you can reference within your application. What I have within here are a number of different components that I've leveraged for a number of different projects. Within here, for instance, here are some different buttons buttons that I personally use at work, say use this template, start this repo, fork this repository. So what's great with this is what we're gonna be able to do is we can create a number of different reusable components that we can add mention and reference during our design. Say for instance, if we have a particular look and feel for things like an input, what I'm gonna be able to do with these different components that I have here is within our generation is I can say, I wanna add in a search functionality right above the opinion section on the web page. And then what I can do is I can at mention the input. And then as soon as I pass in that request, it's going to reference the context of what we have in each of these different component sections. So now if I hop back here, I see that it's installing our input component and adding it directly within our website. And then now within here, you can see that it's gonna add in the search functionality, leveraging that particular input that we have. And if I take a look at all of the different inputs that I have for the YouTube components here, I have that search component with the rounded edges, as well as the icon of that magnifying glass, just like I had referenced. And as you can imagine, as you add in all of those different pieces of your design system, whether it's the headings or hero areas, navigation elements, the buttons, the overall look and feel of tables, different tiles that you might have, what you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna be able to create this very rich context library of design elements you can easily use to extend and prototype, whether it's a website or a product that you're working on. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.